What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you a very simple ROM which is the latest AOSIP official Android 11 based ROM. The build date here is 9th August 2021. This comes with two separate versions, one includes the GApps and one does not. Even the GApps included variant over here takes about 1 GB of space. So that is very less space for a GApps included ROM in my opinion and this is the MIUI vendor based ROM. Yes, the most ROMs right now are switching to the Android 11 based kind of firmware which is like based on OS's vendor but it is it sits on top of the Android 11 firmware. So even if you have broken DRM certification, you should have DRM info showing L1 over there if you are using latest Android 11 firmware. But here this AOSIP ROM is based on still the old Android 10 based MIUI firmware like 12.0.4 MIUI firmware or 12.0.6 MIUI firmware those are like older firmware and yes the ROM is very stable experience over here but definitely you won't get like DRM certification showing L1 over here if you have broken it permanently. So basically the AOSIP official ROM is still a little bit more stable side I would say and you won't get any kind of problems you just flash the firmware the ROM file and you flash the fcrypt dispeller and magisk if you need it and you just reboot. Now before flashing you just wipe cache talvik system data and vendor. I'm assuming you are not coming from android 11 ROMs or something but maybe that too should work I'm not really sure it might work. But here I have flashed the older 12.0.6 firmware. My DRM certification showing as L3 because I have broken it permanently. And yes, I did not flash the Android 11 firmware on this particular ROM. And actually the file size of this particular ROM is about 1.12 GB. That is just amazing in my opinion. And other GApps included ROMs comes around for 1.7 GB, 1.8 GB. I have seen even 2 GB ROMs. But here this particular ROM even with GApps it comes with 1.12 GB of size. That is just way too less when compared to other ROMs. In the Android version section, this is how it looks like. We have the Android version as Android 11, of course. Let me go back. The security patch here is latest of August 5th, 2021. And we have the AOSIP version as the 8th of August, 2021, 11 GApps Rafael, it says. The stock kernel here is the Perf G kernel and we have the SE Linux status as enforcing. In the system panel, you do get a system updater. This looks like the lineage based kind of system updater and you can check for updates from here and it should work super fine. Inside front camera settings in the system, we get the calibration option. So yes, even in this MIUI vendor based ROM, you can calibrate the front camera if you want to, if it's stuck or something. So that is great. And we have the front camera sound effects. These are the sound effects that you will get. Now we have the front camera raised dialogue, camera LED, etc. You can disable. The stock keyboard over here is Gboard because I have flashed the GApps included variant. And in the settings inside this Owl's Nest and the themes, you will get the customizations. But of course, there are customizations, but they are not a lot. Some simple things that you won't get over here, like let me show you if I double tap over here, it doesn't do anything because it does not simply have double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen or even in the status bar. That is weird, but yeah, that's how it is. You have to press the power button every time you want to lock your device. And the fingerprint scanner, it does not have any animation. It only has the fingerprint scanner icon like this one particular icon. You can't even change it. But yes, the fingerprint scanner speed is very stable and it unlocks every time. Just notice how fast the fingerprint scanner speed is. Yes, you can double tap to wake the device and double tap to sleep on the lock screen. But sometimes I have seen this fingerprint scanner just disappears as you can see. So yeah, and right now as you are noticing there is no fingerprint scanner. So I have to swipe up then you will get the fingerprint scanner. So if I tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks super fine. So fingerprint scanner speed is not a problem but you won't get any customization so far with the fingerprint scanner. No animation, no icon changing option, nothing. The double tap to sleep over here is just missing and with that I'm really disappointed because at least I think I should like use the double tap to sleep on the status bar but that feature is simply not there. Every time using the power button just sucks. But yes, I gotta admit that it is a much more simpler experience over here with the ROM. Now talking about the stock launcher, yes, it is a very simple experience again because you are getting the pixel launcher by default. To the left, we still have the Google's discover page and swiping down anywhere in the home screen gets you to the quick settings panel. And as you can see, it shows the Bluetooth battery stats and stuff over there and swiping up gets you to the app drawer. And this is how the app drawer looks like. And you can disable the suggestions if you want to. And of course the widgets and stuff in the home screen is working fine and everything overall in the UI is very very smooth and overall the UI experience is very good. 
Now let's talk about the stock camera over here. Well, you get this old kind of Cyanogen mod kind of camera or the Snapdragon camera over here. Yes, you can switch to all different modes from here. But yes, this is a very basic kind of camera. And I have, of course, installed the ANX camera over here. And with that, everything is working fine. This is the version 190R. As you can see, portrait mode is working super fine. Switching to the front camera, even in portrait mode, is not a problem over here, as you are noticing. So if you have no idea how to flash this, Enix camera on your KT20 Pro. You can click on the card right there or you can check the descriptions. And if you want to enable the Pro video mode and stuff, you can just enable this with the Enix camera Pro app and you can check out the video again from the description for this Pro mode, Pro video mode and the other things like dual video mode stuff like that you can enable. So yeah, camera is not a problem. You can switch between lenses without any issues. I mean the Enix camera actually is working flawlessly here. No issues. It is a MIUI window storm, so no problem so far. Talking about the quick setting panel, you can edit and add multiple toggles over here. So you can actually change the accent colors with the toggle, I guess. Let me actually show you what I've added. I have the battery saver, the dark theme and the Android 11 screen recorder. With that, we still have this device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time. Then we have the hotspot, the do not disturb, the data saver. Heads up, you can disable and you can also enable night light from here and that is working super fine. No issues and we have the nearby share Then the always on display. You can enable or disable from here. DC dimming, you can also toggle that and we have the accent. So from right here, you can change the accent color of the UI. That is just great in my opinion. Let me actually change it to something else like this pink maybe. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, that actually worked. So you can actually change the accent color from the quick toggles itself and that is great in my opinion. Talking about the stock dialer, yes, you still get the Google Pixel dialer and this dialer actually has the call recording option as of right now with the latest update. So yeah, maybe update it if you haven't yet. And Volte calling and voice over Wi-Fi both should be working fine here without any issues. Now, let me show you the customizations over here. In the Owl's Nest, you will get the normal customizations like inside power button, you will get the advanced reboot and stuff. And we have this optional user switch and stuff. And here in the power menu, yes, it shows everything. Like if you tap on advanced, you can directly reboot to the recovery fast boot, etc. But it is really disappointing to see that I really use the Google smart home controls with the power menu, but that simply does not appear over here. Yes, I have tried it multiple times, but the smart home controls simply does not appear over here on the power menu. So for that, I have to open Google home and control my room lights. So that is just annoying in my opinion. In most ROMs, I do get that like smart home controls in the power menu, but here it's just not appearing. In the navigation, we have the enable nav bar and in the system navigation gestures, we have this gesture navigation that is for the full screen navigation gestures. Yes, we do have the left edge, right edge customization, then the dead zone customization. Pill bar, actually you can hide over here like this particular pill bar you can hide, but you cannot simply change the size of it or the thickness of it, which is a disappointment again. And in the advanced gestures, we have the extended swipe action and you can customize that however you want to. Let me go back. We have the two button and three button navigation as well. The pixel animations are there. The invert layout options are there. In the gestures, we have the quickly open camera. The activate the torch option is there. You can set it to double press or long press power button to toggle the torch. And brightness control is there. So you can swipe a finger on the status bar and that will adjust the brightness as you are noticing. Now we have the prevent ringing, the skip music track, switch screen off option is there. And there we only find this double tap to sleep for the lock screen. There is no option again for the double tap to sleep on the status bar and swipe rig screenshot is there and this swipe rig screenshot only has the share edit and delete option there is no like long screenshot or something so you only get share edit and delete option over here inside volume rocker we have this volume panel style you can change it to usb compact audio or tiled i have been using it with the tiled option that's why it looks like this but of course you can change it between these many options let me go back to the interface. We have the quick setting customization. So quick pull down is there. Show tile titles are there and we have the edit icon. Then quick setting column and row number you can customize from here. Yes, I did change that. I think that's why I have this four columns over here. So we have the header opacity and the background opacity changing option as well. Let me go to the heads up settings here. You can customize your heads up or you can turn it off. And the pulse equalizer is there. So if you want to have some like lock screen pulse or something while you are playing music, I think you can enable that. In the like status bar, we have the battery options. From here, you can enable the battery icon style and you can change the battery icon style from here. The percentage you can have it on next to the icon inside the icon. And we have the quick setting battery percentage as well. Clock and date is the usual stuff. You can customize it, of course. Network traffic indicated, you can also enable it and customize it. And in the status bar icons, we have all these headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons over here. 
and you can enable whatever you want to but let me tell you there is no vaulty icon i simply cannot see a vaulty icon over here yes vaulty is working fine but no icons over here and here in the native controls we have the notification lock screen then we have the always show time and info basically the lock screen kind of settings which you get in the display settings and in the general option we have the lock screen charging info the temperature unit you can change from here lock screen media art and stuff you can enable and that's it there is no option again for the figment scanner inside this lock screen customization bummer and we have the other settings like inside over here we have the general notification options headers you can disable screen edge lighting option is there so you can enable edge lighting over here for notifications gaming mode is there you can enable it if you want to let me go to the misc settings here we have the usb configuration of course you can change it to file transfer for convenience let me go back and inside themes we have lot of accent colors as you can see and you can choose any accent color like there are custom accent colors and there are stock accent colors as you are noticing and also we have plethora of fonts over here these many fonts that you will get let me go back we have the icon shapes and then we have the status bar icons and from here you can change it to rounded field etc options now tint quick setting tile option is there in the clock style here are the clock options that you will get but let me tell you there is no option for the latest android 12 kind of clock over here yes there is samsung colored is funny and the shape shift then we have the spectrum yes the shape shift is the closest that you can get with the android 12 kind of clock but yes the big kind of Android 12 clock font is simply missing from this particular ROM. And we have the system theme. You can change it to these many options. I have been using it with the pitch black because I have been using the dark theme over here. And we have the scheduling option for the dark theme as well. And we have the backup theme option so you can back up your current theme. And in the battery settings, this is how it looks like. Now, in the battery settings, if you tap here, you see the full battery usage. In terms of battery life, this ROM is just great. As you can see from here, I have got about 7 hours of screen on time with a full charge. So, no issues with the battery life over here on this ROM. There is also the thermal profile showing up option. And you can change the thermal profiles to these many options. The battery saver is there. Adaptive battery is there. Block sensor options are there. And we have the last full charge and the screen on time showing up over here. No battery temperature, no battery charging cycle, no battery current capacity or the design capacity showing up over here. So all those informations are just missing from this battery settings. In the display settings, we have the brightness level, the night light option is there and we have the adaptive or auto brightness and the wallpaper settings are there, screen timeout you can change and the lock screen settings is again there. Then we have the double tap to wake. I wish there was a button for the double tap to sleep over here at least, but it's not there. So here we have the prevent accidental wake up and stuff, font size is there, display size, DPI you can change, anti flicker or the distributing mode is here. In the sound settings we can control this media call etc volume stuff and if you scroll down we have the ringtone changing option of course, then dial pad tone, screen locking sound, charging sound, vibration etc. The Mi audio dirac is there and you can change your preset for the headsets and the sound quality via bluetooth and the like 3.5 headphone jack is great, no issues so far I have faced and enable hi-fi option is also there. Let me go back, we also have this clear speaker option. So if you want to clear your dust of the speakers, the loudspeakers, you can do that. Now inside security again, there lies some disappointments. Like there is no face unlock, no app lock options over here. Only this fingerprint option shows up. And even in the settings, you can't get any kind of fingerprint scanner icon or animation changing option. It doesn't even have those options to change the animations of the fingerprint scanner or even enable one animation for the fingerprint scanner. So no animation so far with the fingerprint scanner. Let me actually show you. So I'm keeping to double tap over there which is of no use. So as you can see, fingerprint scanner unlocks, but it doesn't have any kind of animation. But you can change lock screen timeout and the power button is randomly locked. Squeak unlock is there, screen of fingerprint is there, and only there is the fingerprint scanner option. Again, no face unlock, no app lock over here. So all those things are simply missing. I have opened a couple of apps over here. And by the way, this is how the recent panel looks like. We have the screenshot, the select option, and you can go to the split screen or pin option. Then we have the pause app and the app info from here. Right now, let me actually show you by opening those apps which I have opened already, if they are in memory or not. First, let's open Chrome. Yes, as you can see, it is in memory. And this file explorer, yes, still in memory. Facebook, still in memory. Twitter is still in memory. And we have the Play Store still in the RAM. And Instagram, yes, Instagram too is in memory. And we have the YouTube app too. Now let's open this Telegram app. So just notice how good the RAM management is of this ROM and yeah, all the apps are staying in memory. So no issues whatsoever that I have faced with this memory management of the AOS IP ROM. It is so light that it has all the apps in memory and that is just great memory management experience. Overall, the whole UI stays very smooth and snappy everywhere.
So definitely gives you that stock Android feel actually over here. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with the CPU stress test of this particular build. Now let me show you if OK Google is working fine or not and as you can see already it is working fine. Let me show you one more time. Hey Google. As you can see it is working super fine. So no issues whatsoever with the Google Assistant of this particular ROM. And I have showed you the DRM info at the beginning of the video. So as you can see even the safety net passes right out of the box here. But here I have flashed the magic and with magic guide the safety net also passes. So no issues whatsoever that you will face with banking apps over here too. What do I think about the AOSIP ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro? The latest build in my opinion is one of the best experience with stock Android that you can get on the Redmi K20 Pro. But definitely it is missing some features that are very important for users like me. Is the double tap to sleep, the fingerprint scanner icons, no always unlock with fingerprint scanner or something. Yeah, those simply makes this ROM a bummer because I can't simply double tap over here or even here. To actually lock the phone I have to tap the power button every time I want to lock the device yes those things definitely makes this ROM a bummer and definitely if you don't need any kind of app lock or something for your device by default at least then I would say this ROM will be a perfect choice for you if you want to enjoy just the stock Android 11 experience so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today I'll be catching you guys in the next one bye, -bye now